You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast, the number one publication and resource for the Internet of Things. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to this on a podcast directory somewhere else, please feel free to subscribe to so get the latest episodes as soon as they are out. My name is Ryan Jacone, and I'll be your host. Today, on today's episode, we have Randy Ryder, the Director of Wireless Product Marketing at Semtech. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with Semtech, they are a supplier of analog and mixed signal semiconductors and advanced algorithms. They also produce a long-range, low-power Internet of Things wireless chipset called LoRa, um, which seamlessly connects sensors to the cloud that, to enable real-time communication of data and analytics. Um, so we talk a lot about uh, asset tracking in this conversation, um, a lot of the way kind of LoRa connects to, to asset tracking, benefits of combining satellite and terrestrial networks to create global connectivity, and enable more use cases in the industry, um, we also talk about different challenges in the space, how companies can stand out. Since Randy does kind of handle more of the marketing side of things, we talk about how companies kind of stand out amongst the crowd um, in, in an industry that is rapidly growing with lots of competition. So um, very good conversation. Hope you find a lot of value in it. But before we get into this, any of you out there are looking to enter the fast growing and profitable IoT market, but don't know where to start? Check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Randy, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Let's kick us off by giving a quick introduction about yourself to our audience. Okay, so my name is Randy Ryder. I work for Semtech and I am responsible for uh, Semtech uh, product marketing on our LoRa enabled products, which includes our trans standard transceiver products as well as a geolocation pro um, platform we call LoRa Edge. Fantastic. And tell us um, for our audience out there who may be not as familiar uh, with, with Semtech and kind of what you do, what the focus is. Right. So, um, my particular focus is uh, around LoRa-enabled products. So uh, um, we, of course, make the um, standard transceiver products uh, that go into um, into all into all kinds of different sensor-enabled sensor products for LoRa, as well as um, the gateway products that we have, which um, provide the network connectivity for the uh, endpoints that are LoRa-enabled. And, uh, and then most recently, of course, we've added to this our device to cloud solution, which is called LoRa Edge. And I believe that will be probably where the primary interest for this topic is. Fantastic. Um, so I, I know one of the main topics I wanted to kind of talk to you about today is asset tracking, the kind of seamless nature of it, um, and the role you all play in that space. So tell us a little bit about, or I guess talk to us a little bit about kind of how you all view the future of asset tracking um, kind of in the, in that nature. Right. So um, asset tracking, of course, it's a pretty broad category. Uh, and actually, um, we've kind of extended that to refer to asset tracking more as asset management. Um, and asset management, we kind of look at uh, as, a, as a horizontal category. It spans really across many different sort of traditional verticals. Uh, there's, of course, logistics. But you can also think of asset management or asset tracking of something that's uh, done indoors. So you can have assets in, for example, a hospital. Um, you could be uh, tracking assets in warehouses. So there's warehouse asset management, inventory management. So there's a lot of aspects to when you talk about asset management. Um, from our perspective, uh, what, what we're focused on is trying to create a, a seamless um, way to track your assets, not just regionally, but also globally, sure. uh, not just outdoor, but also outdoor and indoor. And that means really the combination of a variety of different technologies coupled with um, LoRa, uh, with LoRa to be able to provide this sort of seamless um, um, view on being able to track assets anywhere they are, whether they're outdoor and indoor, mm -hmm. and being able to provide this uh, sort of promise of, of continuous seamless asset tracking. Absolutely. And so let's let's elaborate on that a little bit further because we've um, dabbled in this conversation a bit here and there with companies talking about um, how we can uh, expand the connectivity for a particular um, use case and just IoT in general to make new use cases um, 
uh, more viable, um, make just just enhance existing use cases for exactly what you mentioned, coverage across larger areas, indoor, outdoor, kind of combining them together. So how do we do that? Is, is, and kind of what are the benefits of kind of combining those different technologies, which, you know, talking more towards the satellite and the terrestrial networks to create that, that global access or global connectivity. Um, talk to us a little bit about kind of the benefits of that, how that's done, what this enables kind of thing. Right. So um, from our perspective, um, so what, what we've done is we've created a platform called Laura Edge. And Laura Edge is um, our device to cloud platform. And, and, and the purpose of Laura Edge is to address a, a lot of the, the specific points that you just raised. The on one end of the platform is the device side, which is the silicon. Um, the, the particular silicon that we have is a combination of different technologies. So uh, obviously there is the LoRa piece, which means that there is a, an advanced LoRa transceiver. And on that, uh, um, with the silicon of the LoRa advanced transceiver, we've embedded uh, some geolocation features. So we've added a GNSS receiver, we've added a Wi-Fi receiver uh, to basically create a, a homogenous platform, hardware platform, to be able to do uh, outdoor, indoor geolocation um, um, over LoRa, LoRa WAN. Now, the other piece to the platform is, um, um, I mentioned device to cloud. So there's a cloud component to this. And the cloud component to the platform is what actually provides the location uh, results. So the, uh, the device basically sniffs either gets a GNSS, uh, gets the GNSS data from the satellites, or it's receiving a Wi-Fi uh, uh, location information. And then that information is fed up to the cloud in what we have a sol where we have a solver, and that solver returns a latitude and longitude. And so that's, in, in general, um, kind of high level what the platform is. Okay. Um, the first release of that platform, or the first product that we had that, um, that was part of this platform was called LR1110. And that was a single band sub gigahertz LoRa transceiver with the ability to do uh, GNSS scans as well as Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And now we've complemented that this year with what we call the LR1120. That's the second device in the portfolio, which now adds satellite connectivity capabilities as well as 2.4 gigahertz connectivity capabilities. And the two combined really provide this ability to do both terrestrial satellite or mixed mode connectivity uh, solutions and and use the the geolocation features of combining gnss plus wi-fi to to give you sort of this seamless this vision of seamless outdoor to indoor tracking as well as being able to support kind of a global global use cases and i, I think as you mentioned one of the things that's been missing um in the in the asset in, in kind of asset tracking is the pieces have been there um, for a variety of use cases, but to be able, for example, if you take um, international shipping, container shipping, um, use cases like that, what's been missing is this ability to provide a cost efficient platform that can do this seamless tracking across oceans, across geogra geographies. And, and with Laura Edge, we're really trying to address a lot of those type of use cases with the, with the enablement that we have now with the two particular products that I mentioned. And um, specifically talking about the use cases here for a second, what are some use cases that you've seen, um, I guess, in it be enabled through combining of the satellite and terrestrial networks and providing that, that wider coverage? Are there, are there things that maybe weren't as viable before but are more viable now? Right. So I think there's been a need in the market um, for um, specific scenarios, for example, in um, in very rural areas, for example, where you may not have terrestrial uh, network coverage. Um, the, the example of uh, transnational or international shipping over oceans, obviously there's a coverage problem there from a terrestrial perspective. So uh, a great example of a use case where satellite plays, uh, I think a significant role in the future is for um, livestock management. So in certain geographies of the world where you have um, um, cattle tracking and sheep tracking, uh, 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 management of, of, of livestock. Um, it's the, these are in very remote areas where terrestrial network availability is sparse or non-existent. And there you have a situation where you could potentially, where a customer could potentially set up a localized network to manage the livestock 
and then use the uplink to a satellite to basically con get connection back to a backend uh, system. Um, so that's one example. A mixed mode operation would be, for example, where, uh, again, going back to logistics, where you may have um, uh, a, a logistics company that uses terrestrial networks in, in, in certain areas, maybe in urban areas, and then when they move through a, through a very uh, remote area or a rural area, on like a highway or something where they may where they may lose connectivity, they can they can go back to satellite. Satellite can also work really well if you look at a, a land area like Europe, where you have a lot of different countries. You may have different uh, different types of networks where satellite can provide sort of a seamless coverage, uh, where you don't have to worry about roaming issues and things like that. Fantastic. Um, let me, if we move out of just um, this scope of thinking for a second, I wanted to ask you uh, from your perspective, what are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing kind of faced in the market? I mean, for instance, there's a lot of noise, right, that goes on in the, in the IoT industry. There's tons of companies out there that have IoT solutions, different industries, different use cases. So as if we stick on that topic from related to challenges, how do companies stand out? How do companies kind of separate themselves out from and with with the use cases that they they're they're building solutions for and really kind of get themselves in front of potential customers. Yeah, I think um, yeah, you bring up a good point about IoT and some of the pain points in general with IoT. I think you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we believe that the lower that the lower edge platform itself can deliver a lot of value downstream, and then and then our customers are able to translate that value that we're providing into. Uh, of value downstream from that point on. And, and a great example of that is in the livestock tracking market, going back to that again, livestock management has traditionally been sort of a non-technology kind of focused uh, area. So, um, but there's been, uh, at least in the Western world, there've been recent changes in regulatory requirements where, um, and I think it's also coming from a, from a consumer point of view, where consumers, for example, want to know traceability of the things that they eat. So that affects like agriculture in general, where somebody may want to know, um, you know, where did this where did this banana come from, or what's the, you know, is there a, a supply chain accountability for a certain piece, of, you know, a certain food or a certain meat product? And right. so that that pull from the market, from either the consumer or from a regulatory point of view, is creating the need to either have more uh, 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 digitization within the supply chain uh, where you can you know, create this sort of accounting um, or it's creating the need to be able to add more value in terms of the, the traditional sense of livestock tracking. Um, and, and to put that into perspective, um, there, there's, a, there, there's been recent changes or concerns with, for example, cattle, where if they get sick, um, you know, the, the farmer needs to know quite fast the cow is getting sick so that it can contain the problem. And a lot of these, um, a lot of customers that have, for example, in livestock tap and tracking industry, you're talking about areas where you have animals deployed across thousands of square acres where you really can't do this in a manual process. So setting up sort of a LoRa network on property, on premise, gives you the ability to create more insights in terms of what's happening with the animals. It's not just about tracking them, it's also about having sensors deployed on the animals to be able to measure temperature and other behaviors. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of interesting as we start to think about what these types of technologies enables and how companies are more closely aligning what they're building to particular use cases, particular problems within a particular industry to stand out because it's, it's, it's something that I think for a long time, the industry struggled with where everyone made it seem like they can do anything and everything um, because they all have a platform where they can, you know, build for, for any type of use case. When in reality, we're finding that it's, that's not the case. Um, and it's not really what's needed to be successful in IOT or required to be successful in IOT. So it's a very interesting kind of, um, Way to start thinking about how the industry is put together and how is how companies are trying to stand out. Right, right. And at the end of the day, you know, we have to deliver value, and, and the value has to be perceived as actually being valuable to a right. customer. And I think one of the things with IoT is, you know, it's 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 progressing, it's moving in the right direction. But being able to hit, you know, being able to make sure that it's affordable and it delivers the right value to a customer, that's that's the, the you know that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and there there's just changes in the technology as well, right? As as technology progresses, for example, 
Um, we work with certain customers, again, in the cattle trucking industry. I find this really fascinating. They're able to deploy sensors into the body of the cow, and we're able now to be able to have a, transmit, a transmitter inside with that sensor, that temperature sensor, or that bolus that's delivering medicine. Mm -hmm. And we're able to transmit information from inside the cow to, to the ear tag and then Perfect. deliver that and, and then send that via an uplink to, you know, to the, to the customer's um, server to be analyzed the data, right? So yeah. the, the ability to do some of these use cases, it, you know, we're, we're, being able, we're being able to address more and more use cases because, because price, technology, performance, all of these factors are coming together to, to deliver the right value at the right time. So, so based on kind of, um, uh, as we wrap up, I just want to ask this kind of final question is, is who will be the most successful companies? Like what, what does a company have to do to really stand out and, and, and drive engagement and to, to acquire customers? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the most important thing is, is that the, the entire value chain is indeed delivering value. And I think where we see, uh, for example, with Laura edge, we see, a, a, we see a, a lot of interest in this platform because we've put together a highly integrated, um, um, solution at a, a, at a very nice price point that helps our customers to reduce time to market, to re reduce their costs, and then downstream deliver, you know, translate that into downstream value. And I think the, the, the companies that will be successful are the ones that are able to, to leverage technology and, and, and put together solutions that meet the customer's needs. I mean, one of the main things we're always constantly focused on is making sure that we're listening to the customer and making sure that you know, the products that we're building are meeting the needs. And I, I think it boils right. back down to that, right? Absolutely. Could not agree more. Um, so for our audience out there who wants to kind of learn more about everything you have going on on, on the Semtech side of things, what's the best way to do that, to follow up, stay in touch, that kind of thing? Well, I would, first of all, recommend going to Semtech.com, visiting our website uh, and, you know, whatever your particular area of interest is, we have a very good website with all of our lower enabled products listed. And then the next step would be to uh, probably contact your local sales rep who okay. then eventually will contact us and, and we can help you get that product uh, development started. Fantastic. Well, Randy, it's been a true pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to kind of talk to our audience about this. Um, we've obviously been in touch with other members of your team for, for a while, and you guys have some fantastic things going on, contributing a lot to the industry. Um, so uh, I think the asset tracking space is a very popular one. Um, and these, these technologies and just the general growth of the space in, in, uh, across the board is, is a win for everyone when it comes to IoT. So, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.